The Alchemist line of cards has been gaining more traction in the community as time goes on. And although it definitely still has some quirks, I think things are improving to the point where it might be worth checking one of these cards out if you're looking for something to drive a secondary build. Before we get into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to leave a like and subscribe, and leave a comment if there's something you think should have been mentioned. This video is also meant to be a second part to my April 2023 performance update, and add on additional information I think is important to build some context, and also discuss some areas I think it's excelling in and also lagging a bit behind in. Let's dive into the A750 and see whether or not it's worth considering at this point in 2023. Right off the bat, I think what's holding this card back, or really any from Intel, is their ARC control panel. Compared to the NVIDIA control panel, I actually prefer some of the stylistic choices made here, and also think that the bare bones of the interface work pretty well. Nothing is fundamentally broken, but it feels like it's missing options. As of now, when you go into the software, you can adjust different things such as screen recording presets, power targets, and also see a side-by-side -side panel for all your games, almost exactly like what NVIDIA's GeForce Experience has. The overclocking settings are pretty limited, and there's still the weird options labeled GPU Boost and the Core Voltage Offset. Core Voltage Offset is pretty self-explanatory, and it's basically the only way to adjust the clocks of the card indirectly. The GPU Boost seems to make the clocks target the higher end of the range more aggressively, but you can get by without really touching the slider, it seems. Most of your overclocking is going to be done by adjusting the core voltage offset, which will push the core higher on the voltage frequency curve. You can't really dial in a specific overclock, such as plus 200 MHz on the core, but you can kind of get a feel for how your particular sample behaves and where it seems to hit the wall. You probably won't fry your card, but keep in mind that if the targets you're setting are too aggressive, the card just won't apply them and it'll look like you aren't really doing anything. I think overall the software is functional for a first launch, but it's going to need improvements across the board. Some discrete overclocking settings would be a helpful inclusion, but even some basic stuff such as user settings saving between closing the app just doesn't happen. It's possible I have it misconfigured, but it's just some things that I've noticed and have become consistent issues whenever I decide to plop the card into my system. The performance of the A750, based on the past two videos I've made in which I've discussed actual benchmarks, has seemingly improved on average, but also more importantly on the lower end of the spectrum. There were a couple of games where I noticed this more than others, which makes sense as they probably aren't going through and optimizing for every title. But whatever improvements they're making have been beneficial for the performance profiles of a variety of different games. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and also presumably the upcoming CS2, has seen a huge improvement on average, competing with the performance offered by the significantly more expensive RTX 3060 12GB in 1080p. When the card launched, things were looking more like a GTX 1070 at all resolutions, so things have improved quite significantly in this title. Additionally, some games that wouldn't run or would crash after some time, like some of the older Call of Duty games and Red Dead Redemption 2, now run stably even though there might be some graphical errors here and there. I mean, to be completely transparent, I've got plenty of examples of graphics errors happening in DirectX 11 games, and I can show them on screen. For the most part, they're not really game-breaking, but they are kind of amusing. Just take a look. To give credit, when I first got the card, this game wouldn't even start, but the fact that this is happening just shows that these cards are still in their infancy when compared to Nvidia and AMD. These errors have never occurred on my 3070 Ti, and to me it just looks like there's a corrupted model in memory which can admittedly be fixed in a driver update. The games don't crash to the desktop anymore, and they run smoothly in greater than 90% of scenarios. Red Dead Redemption 2 also doesn't cause a blue screen anymore, but it still has that FSR lighting bug that I described in my first video about the card. Admittedly, this is an AMD software technology, so they probably aren't going to optimize it for this specific architecture, but also keep in mind that this card is powerful enough to not really need any sort of upscaling technology if you're going to play at 1080 or 1440p. Building off FSR, ZSS support is fully there, and it's completely hardware accelerated by the included XMX cores. If you watch my dedicated ZSS video, the conclusions from playing on native Intel hardware are 
pretty similar, but I will say the performance uplift is more noticeable than on NVIDIA hardware. ZSS as a whole looks superior to FSR 2.1 in the majority of games it's included in, but it still looks worse than DLSS in a few crucial areas. Most notably, significant ghosting surrounding 3D models and menus, and then ghosting on items that are in front of the skybox. It's a really weird and specific issue to have, but if I had to guess, it has something to do with moving objects in front of static scenes. This can probably be fixed in future iterations of this tech, as I remember this also being an issue in the first iteration of DLSS. But in the games it's in today, it looks fine in most situations, and it's not super duper noticeable unless you're looking for it. When it comes to video editing, the A750 works pretty well out of the box with the software in my workflow. Specifically, DaVinci Resolve has worked since I got the card in December of last year, and the AV1 encode decode blocks are a nice inclusion in a card that's this inexpensive. I will say though that up until about 3 months ago, there were artifacts in some rendered videos coming out of DaVinci Resolve when the AV1 encoder was utilized, and they actually showed up in one or two of the videos on this channel. I couldn't consistently get these errors to happen, but when they did happen it was noticeable and low-key and epilepsy concerned. Another thing I think is important to mention, and I probably should have said this first, but don't pick up one of these cards if your motherboard and CPU don't support resizable bar or smart access memory. Intel has been very transparent with the fact that these cards basically need this tech turned on to achieve baseline performance, so it's not like it's a huge surprise. But from my experience, you literally just should not run with it off. I mean, it will boot and you can play games on it, but it just runs so poorly, and the stuttering is present to the point where it legitimately turns me off from even continuing testing. I also am most comfortable recommending this card in a system utilizing an Intel CPU. I know from experience that resizable bar support comes with at least some Z390 motherboards, but the problem with them is that they're limited to PCI 3 which could potentially limit bandwidth. Rocket League chips are the minimum I would feel comfortable giving the go-ahead on, and for what it's worth, they can be found for pretty fair prices on the second-hand market. AMD's Zen 3 chips, combined with the B550 chipset, are also probably the lowest I would go on the AM4 socket, if you plan on picking up one of the Alchemist cards. So to answer the question, is the A750, and to a lesser extent, the Alchemist line of graphics cards worth considering at this point in 2023? Well, if you get a good deal on one and pretty much exclusively play modern games, then the A750 would be a decent alternative to the base RX 6600 or the RTX 3050. The only issues I really have is that the card isn't optimized for older games, and you need a more modern and expensive platform to socket the card into. If you're a tech enthusiast and you've already got your primary GPU and want something to play with, then an Alchemist card would be an interesting investment with the intention of FAFOing as opposed to making this your primary graphics solution. For programmers, this card also makes an interesting alternative to Nvidia's low-end Ampere cards, because it has the AI and Matrix features not found in AMD cards. Sickle is overall a little different than CUDA in terms of how you need to architect your software, but when it comes to performance, you get access to the entire GPU and all of its features. And also keep in mind that your Sickle code can also run on an NVIDIA GPU. You can write your code once and basically run it everywhere, which can ultimately save you time when it comes to porting between different graphics vendors and architectures. Would I pick up the A750 if I wanted to put together a modern, purely gaming-focused budget build? Well, probably not as you can get similar performance from AMD and also wider official game support. But as an alternative to an NVIDIA card for something like a budget workstation, it can provide legitimate competition in the price to performance category as well as the feature war. Alchemist as a whole is definitely maturing more quickly than I initially thought it was going to, and in a few more months things will probably be in significantly better shape than they are today. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Would you personally pick up the A750, and what would you primarily use it for? I think it's going to be more interesting as we move further into the future, as Intel is showing that they can fix a seemingly disappointing and or broken product. That's all I really have to say on the matter. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.